It is the first official day of hurricane season. There is a system in the Gulf, as you just heard, tropical waves in the Atlantic. And the message is simple. The time to get ready is now. A new survey from AAA found 25% of Floridians would ignore evacuation warnings. Joining me this morning, Senator Rick Scott. Good morning, Senator. Do not, do, do not, um, I mean, listen, when they say, if people say evacuate, get the heck out. I mean, the, you know, the, you look at these storms and look at how many people died with Hurricane Ian uh, last year. These are, a lot of them are water events, um, the storm surge, the flooding. We lost, you know, close to 150 people. 150 families lost a loved one uh, last year. I mean, when I was governor, my goal was keep everybody alive. You can always be, rebuild that house. You can buy another car. You just can't rebuild the life. So uh, we've got to do everything we can to keep everybody alive. Yeah, I was going to say one in four. That's 25 percent. That's a bit frightening. And you, you mentioned, Ian, we saw the destruction in southwest Florida. We saw the problems here in northeast Florida with king tides, with, with Nicole. Hey, I, I know you did a PSA with Jim Cantori from the Weather Channel. When you see Jim come into town, you know there's trouble on the horizon. When you two chatted off air, what kind of interesting insights did he give you? You know, I've had, I got to work with him the entire time I was governor because unfortunately we had a lot of, we had four hurricanes while I was governor. He, he cares about, you know, keeping people safe. He cares about getting people good information. I tell everybody, you know, you need to listen to local weather. You need to listen to the weather channel, get the, get the information and make an informed decision. But think about this. You have got to take care of yourself. Uh, you can go to ready.gov uh, to see a checklist, what you ought to do. But also remember, if you're along the coast of Florida, you can't wait till the last half hour to start saying, oh, I got to get out of here because the roads are going to be clogged and we got to make sure there's always enough gas out there for you. Right, and you have to know your evacuation route as, as well. I do have to ask you about another impending storm, potential impending storm, the debt ceiling crisis. Uh, it goes to the Senate floor now that it passed the House. You said you're going to vote against the proposed legislation to raise the debt limit until 2025 in exchange for cuts to domestic discretionary spending. You said you want to see a return to fiscal sanity. Well, I've been traveling all, you know, all around the state, and here's what people tell me. The inflation is hurting them. All across Florida, inflation is hurting people. People are worried about their retirement benefits. They're worried about their medical bills. Look, I know that Kevin McCarthy worked hard to try to get something done here, but this bill is not going to reduce inflation. Matter of fact, it's going to take the debt from $31 trillion to $35 trillion. We're going to borrow money to pay the interest on our federal debt. Now, when you have a child that is spending too much money, are you happy when they get another loan? Or are you happy when they stop wasting the money? We've got to get to fiscal sanity. I did it as governor. We balanced the budget every every year as governor. I paid off a third of the state debt. We cut taxes. We can do that up here. Unfortunately, this bill doesn't drive down inflation. And I'm, I'm focused on we got to get inflation down. What amendments would you like to see ultimately? I want to get I want to get to a process to where whether we do it in one day or we do it in two, three or four or five years, we've got to get to a balanced budget. This bill is not even, there's no direction towards a balanced budget. So I think we have to go back to the drawing board and say to ourselves, how do we start making tough choices? You have to do that. People, all families do that. There's a lot of nice to haves that they don't have. So they say, well, that would be a nice to have, but that's not, we don't have enough money. We have plenty of federal revenue. We have unfortunately a spending problem at the federal level. So I think we have to go back to the drawing board and say, how do we get our spending under control? Even at the risk of not meeting that June 5th deadline? Well, we never default. Uh, Treasury has plenty of revenues to, uh, to pay. And by the way, why do they wait until the last second to do this and try to cram a bill down our throats that you know people know is not going to actually do what what we know has to happen? They, they do. They do they, they've known this for months. Why are we doing this the last two days? Why do we? Why didn't we start in January and start having meetings on a daily basis? To see how do we go through the budget line by line? That's what I did as governor. There's four thousand lines of the state budget. I went line by line and say this is a nice to have, but. You know, we don't have that much revenue, so we can't do these things. We're going to focus our attention on these things. That's what we have to Governor, do at the federal level. Governor Rick Scott, always a pleasure. And my best to Anne, as always. Thanks for talking to us. Okay. Bye-bye.